Good afternoon, Charlie. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me this afternoon. This conversation, of course, marks the launch of an online exhibition, which is of a body of eight new drawings direct from your studio, which we are launching online, which is very exciting. Obviously, not the original idea, but circumstances have kind of forced us into this situation. And it's a great opportunity to take the time to talk to you a little bit more about your work and your and your practice so that this can run as a podcast alongside that exhibition. So I thought we should start with, you know, you, you're, you're up there in your studio in the Scottish borders. It's a beautiful spring day. And, um, and so what does a typical day in your studio look like? Well, it depends. It depends how much email work there is to do first. So <laughs> you've got to get through the, the admin, you know, as we all know about. And so that might take, I mean, that might take, you know, the morning, even the morning. But I think, I think I usually, I mean, we get up at 6.15 and then I, get, I do a cycle ride, breakfast, then emails and stuff. So any time after half past nine, I'll probably, but if, probably in truth, it's probably not until 10, 10.30 before you get into the studio, actually, much of the, most of the time. Because you try and get the ad business stuff out of the way first, really. Now, at the moment, I'm I'm in the middle. Well, I've started a, another drawing. I'm in the middle of the the first stages, which is the mostly the first stages is pencil work, which is a very quick and and very busy. I'm a very it's a very active active time where I do it. I'm really buzzing, really, and um, in some ways. Yeah, you, you asked that question, or you, you, you put the question in, in the question you were going to suggest is that about automation. And in some ways, yes, I'm in automation mode in, or role because you, you're trying to short, you stop thinking. Uh, you, the whole aim is to stop thinking, really, and just do and react to, to what's uh, in front of you. Obviously, I have done a small, some preparatory drawings, but and they're a guide, but I try not to be too strongly guided by them if, if I feel the drawing is going another way. Because in the end, it's the big drawing that counts, not the small one. And then it, 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 that, that drawing can go on for... That drawing is probably the quickest part of the time, and that might be a matter of a day or two only. And then you, you, you're doing the other processes, which is adding layer of wax and gouache and so on, which gives more depth to the paint, to the drawing. And at the end, you can go back to drawing because the pencil lines, because I use a very hard pencil, they... Um, I think I'll take my glasses off. Um, I don't need to... Uh, um, I'll, uh, because I've got a very hard pencil... It creates a groove in the in the, in the paper, and 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 when you apply the gouache, the the, the ink of the gouache will go into the into the grooves, and and so in the sense it becomes a bit like a print, if that makes sense. Especially as a lot of the drawings, when I kept just before I put the final layer of gouache on, I um, put a rubber layer of wax over the whole surface, and what that means is that. The gouache only goes in the black line, in the lines. Uh, it just picks up the lines. Um, I suppose the I suppose the wax must um, glide over the top of the grooves. Really. So on the final stages, I can I'm trying to emphasise various parts of the the pencil line to to you know to emphasise various parts of the drawing. It, coming to a point where I'll even use a single, you know, a very very fine number one sort of paintbrush to to actually paint paint in individual lines if I have to, you know. At that point then, at that stage of the drawing, we're getting to it slows right, right down. And and, and I might be I can be messing around for several days trying to get get it adjusted. And I suppose I'm trying to get to what is it, stillness or something? Uh, I'm going to put these glasses back on because this your picture is so small I can't hardly see you. In. And uh, it's some, it does help somehow to see somebody. <laughs> and yes, I'm trying to get a sort of calmness and stillness within the drawing, even though it's very busy. I suddenly want I want it I want to I want to control that busyness. I'm not quite sure why, but 
that that feels right anyway. So is that what satisfaction yeah. in a painting looks like to you or feels like? It's it's finding, it's yeah, arriving at a point of stillness. You call it, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, and stillness is important. And I wish, I don't really know why, but in some ways my role is not to ask the question why. My role, I, I see, is just to do. Well, the, I suppose I the um, what's interesting about your drawing practice is that You've been an artist for many, many years, but you haven't always made drawing a primary means of expression. But more no, recently, it... you have. Yeah. How do you, for for something like ten years? Yeah, I think partially I got very frustrated with sculpture because one, you if you if you're not selling it or showing it a lot, the damn stuff just sits there, and you keep having, and if it's quite big, you keep having to move it. And I get really fed up with it. And also, it's very it's slow it's slow work. And in some ways, because I felt I wasn't getting anywhere, and I wasn't for for years really with with sculpture. Uh, I suppose, and so I decided about when I was well, this would have been twenty ten that I was going to concentrate on drawing as one. You can get through ideas very quickly, and and in some ways, it's 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 more. Me in my head, my personal... In some ways, it's a bit like, let's put it like this on the musical thing. It's the difference between a, a big concert piece and a, a chamber work or something in classical music. And it's the chamber work which is more personal and more introverted, if you like. And, but, but I find that more interesting. Mm. And, I, and, 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 so, and, and the sculpture was the more public side of things. And so I turned to drawing as a, as a way of getting through ideas first and finding, maybe finding myself more. Because I was, about 50, I suddenly realised, you know, you can't get, you've got to stop being frustrated at not getting anywhere with this work. You've just got to do it for yourself. And I think I decided, I thought sculpture, I wasn't doing it for myself so much, as well as being, it just took too long, really, to, I'm, I'm impatient in some ways. The older you get, the more impatient you get. Because you know you can see you can sort of see the departure lounge, you know, um, coming up, you know, closer and closer. It's all right for you, youngins, you know. You don't even believe it's going to happen. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so the date that you give as the title on the work has always interested me because I've never known if it's the start of the work or the end of the work. Oh, the end. Okay. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Because. There doesn't seem much point in, 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 in putting a date where you begin because you may never finish, might you? So, um, but an end is, in some ways, it, yeah, you have, you make a decision that it's finished. It, it isn't. It's never really finished. You could, there's always something you could do, but I think in some ways also you you lose the you can lose the freshness of it and that sort of thing. And that's sort of the sort of decision you make somehow that it, you've got as far as you can, you're going to go with that that piece of work. Mm. I think that's what's really um, captivating about your work is that energy that you manage to harness within the the framework or the the constraint or or outline of of the square. So you start always with with the square, and then you're you're working within that each time. But th there's this containment versus sort of freedom or or energy that I think you know, that kind of push and pull creates a really interesting practice. Um, yeah, because you, you asked about, you said, mentioned the word restraint. Mm. About, I mean, and you, you meant the square. It is a restraint, but also it, it's, it's a, it's, it makes decision-making a lot easier because um, otherwise there's all those other different sizes you can do. I mean, you can, you can have a, a rectangle in all sorts of different proportions. So there is a sort of convenient side of things, because as a maker of things, I'd rather call myself just a maker of things, as a maker of things, there's so many choices, and, 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 and it's actually quite important to reduce your choices. But there was a logic behind reducing choices to a square. Well, you've got... The classic thing about portrait and landscape, isn't it? You're always talking about whether well, paintings are in proportion of portrait and landscapes, but a square is neither. 
so it has that great advantage. Mm. But it is a very powerful structure, and sort of virtually nothing will break it down, really. Mm. So I'm constantly tr trying to break it down to a point where it just about, you know, sometimes it may nearly disappear altogether. But and so that's there's that nice tension about trying to see how far you can go with a drawing mm. um, uh, in, in terms of, you know, extending the drawing beyond, beyond the boundary. And yet it's still a, it still feels like a square, mm. uh, even though it's 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 it's. it's it, it, the, the, the drawing is strayed right away. In fact, if I sent you a picture of the pencil work, got, I quite, got quite a bit further than that when I sent you the picture early on today. The pencil line's going right to the edge of the piece of paper. and uh, But it, I, it, 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 you'll still feel the square when it's finished, I hope. You mentioned you just a few moments ago you sort of changing concerns or, or a sense of being impatient as... Uh, you feel time is against you. And I wonder if your inspirations have changed uh, and and who or what they 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 were to start with and, and whether those... I mean, you sent me a beautiful picture of your studio this morning saying, this is my inspiration, you know, the view from your studio window. But I wonder beyond that, mm. that creative space, mm. what what really influences you? Yeah, it's always a very difficult one, that, Anna, because... You you know as a painter yourself that um, it's very hard to pin down what influences are uh, and where they're from. You, there are certain people. I mean, I, I would probably say some of the abstract expressionists, expressionists and minimalists. Um, you know, Pollock, uh, Agnes Martin, maybe Solowit, Rothko, those sort of people. You know, funnily enough, at the other end of the thing, I'd probably say Revillias and Nash. You know, so I follow their sort of the English, their English landscape. I'm quite interested in in having having all those sort of different influences mixed up. But then, but then you look at the Turner or something, or um, a Seurat, or you know, and you get very excited by seeing those. So how how do you know where you're coming from? In many ways, you you pick up all these influences over your life, uh, and so I, I really. Not sure, and and I think the other thing is, and I think it pays not to have heroes anyway, and because, in my opinion, if if you've got a, a, a hero, and I mean a female or a male hero, but um, in some ways, can, can you then you can't get past them, so you've got to see them as mortal, if you like. That's the trouble with heroes; they tend to be immortalized, you know, and and you've got to get past that, really. Haven't you? Absolutely. But then, but then you talked about the Alan. Yeah, I talked about the Alan Bank, and there definitely are influences from landscape and where you live. But again, I used to try and draw, start the basis of a drawing on something particular. Some of the earlier works, in fact, about the time where you see that drawing behind you, behind me, right? <laughs> can behind you see you. that behind me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Well, well, that's about. I think it was about the year two thousand, you know. And I, and I, I, at that same time, I was doing. I did several drawings which were influenced by the the the, the hedge, if you like. And I tried to sort of make sense of the hedge, but I think in in many ways the one behind me was more successful than ones where I was trying too hard. So, so I real I thought of about that time. I, I realised I should abandon any thought of representation because somehow it restricted it just sort of well i couldn't do anything with it i didn't i don't know how to draw I, in that sense i don't know how to, i can't i can't cope with drawing in that set in that way you know uh, I'm, I'm a great admirer of people who can mm. um uh, in fact i'm rather jealous of their abilities but um i i, I feel it's it, it's not a route that i can take for whatever reason Maybe it's pure laziness. I mean, I remember, well, you know, when you were doing uh, live classes, you know, I mean, I would plug away at them, but in, in the end, I think also, and I don't think I was that excited by it, but just drawing for the, I don't know, just starting with a pencil and just doing something, just sticking a pencil on paper and just going for it, it's, it's a bit basic, isn't it? But there you are. 
Well, you gave a wonderful I'm, I'm talk. Quite a basic person, really. You gave a wonderful talk um, as part of your last exhibition with us in Messam's Wiltshire in the Long Gallery about drawing and mm -hmm. um, that sort of immediacy of it and the importance of it as an action, as a, a, as a way of mark making um, mm. and the kind of accessibility of it, as well as the fact that it's sometimes not seen as the highest of art forms when actually, you know, I think what is amazing about your 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 work and i don't know if it's the scale or the detail or the the way that you make them is something about the mark making it's sort of like looking at, at it's almost like listening to music you know there's kind of there's a lot to sort of be absorbed by and i suppose what's strange about this exhibition i i it quote unquote is that um people won't be seeing your works in in real space you know they'll be experiencing them virtually which is a, a a sort of departure you know because artists want people to stand in front of their work and so i wonder if there's any um mm. advice we could give to to people looking at your work and maybe experiencing it for the first time through through yeah. a computer screen well, I mean, on the whole, I prefer not to give advice, but because um, I think it's a bad idea. But um, people don't like advice mostly. But um, well, that you put the finger on it really. I mean, if they approached it like music, um, that would because I mean, music in the end, in the end, particularly sort of just instrumental, it, it is is an is abstraction, uh, and so. If they can, if they can cope with the abstraction, I mean, you know, some abstraction didn't start in the twentieth century, as far as my mind. It, it started long before, and certainly in music. I mean, it, the abstraction's always been there, but it hasn't been. They haven't talked. People haven't talked about it like that, have they? Really? But it's, it's always been there in music. I think nobody knows really. They, you know, all these people tell you what it's all about. This music, but, but I'm. I'm always sceptical about what their claims because, in, in, as in all people who make who, who create things, um, I don't think always they know exactly know where they're going. Because if you know where you're going, I'm, I'm, it's rather simplistic, maybe. But, but if you know where you're going, do you bother to do it? So I suppose I'm I'm thinking the only the only reason you're going in a direction is because you don't know where it's going to come out. That's that's where the excitement is of of, of, doing, of creating anything. But I can't obviously I can't speak for anyone else, but I do feel it's that must be to a certain extent how it is. Because I, I, in fact, I remember what the one I've forgotten who it was, but it doesn't matter. It was, it was some pretty recently who who was, who was going. I think she was, she was going. To, she was doing something for the tape, but she said she'd got this great idea and and. and um, and they'd accepted it, but now she'd got to get go and make it. Well, you see, and she was rather didn't really like the idea of making it because, but but you see, and and this happens at colleges now. Rather, you you're meant to you meant to write it all down what you're going to do, and then you do it. Well, that seems seems pointless. You, it, it's if it, the great idea to, to me has to be. Uh, modified by by the physical the physical facts of, of making and, and so that if you just have an idea on paper and then you totally translate it into into a physical reality i'm not i'm not sure whether you've achieved very much you might as well just have have the idea on paper which is in other words just the concept the concept so there's nothing wrong with that because the, the, the conceptualists you know did, did that well you know I'm, I, for me you've got the physical but now I'm old school. You're always taught. You, you were always taught that, weren't you? Maybe. Well, I don't know. You, I don't know whether they still taught you that, really, um, Hannah, when you were at college. About you know the, uh, the, 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 the the sort of that you know you've got to let the idea be uh, the, the material, allow the material to 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 have some say in in, in the matter when when you're making something. You know? um, did, what do they teach you in that sense? Well, when I went to art school, I went to quite a traditional art school, and so we had a real focus on, on painting and on drawing, um, and on materials and being able to work with them, 
um, mm. and being able to observe. You know, that was a very kind of important part of of my education. Um, but mm. that was, you know, nearly nearly 20 years ago. So it's uh, I'm sure it's changing. But I think for a man who, do, you know, doesn't like to dish out advice, that's that is excellent advice, because I think you know all the best artworks rely on on the artist's ability to use their materials well and 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 you certainly do that um I, yeah well so i, I suppose um, and well i mean I, I forgot to say of course i listen to music a lot with with the with the drawing room i mean i don't i tr i try and definitely don't let the music influence the drawing if you like but it, it does calm me, and, 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 and also, it, I suppose it's somehow, it's that parallel nature of it that I like, you know. Um, though having said that, it did influence me this this morning. There was a, a Dvorak uh, wind, wind octet, I think. Anyway, I was I, I was dancing to that, see, so. But then I just left the drawing and, and uh, sort of danced around the floor, you know. So, had a boogie um, instead so of I, it uh... can distract me but then i but then i've always i've always i've danced i've always danced uh, in some way um you know even at college I, I would be the first one on the floor no no girl would ever dance me because i would i was just too wild i would just do it all for for hours you know anyway um, so you're going to be totally fine during this period yeah. of forced isolation in your studio with your music on uh, your pencils to hand and um, and your dancing shoes at the ready. Yeah, we can. It's, you can. We can most ignore it, but, but um, it, nonetheless, I mean, you're, you're a bit conscious. You're always conscious. You, it's in at the back of your mind, isn't it? I mean, well, especially as, as you, you know, there was loads of things that, like like all the exhibitions we were going to do, and 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 there was going to be an, an exhibition of sculpture. In, down near uh, Newcastle, um, Cheeseburn, you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you, have you been to some of those exhibitions? Um, not they have for... sort of sculpture exhibitions over the summers. Yes, not for a few anyway, years. Yeah. I mean, the point is, I mean, they're quite good. I mean, they're, 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 they're properly curated, you know, and so nicely done. Matthew Jarrett, anyway, it's good. Um, and, and then obviously you listen to news and things and you know it's there. Mm. And it kind of, it does disturb you somewhat, but... I think I've come to a, a point now where I, I, I'm not. I refuse to be disturbed by it anymore. It's just part of. It's just part of the new condition, you know. Yeah. Um, I... In some ways, in some in some terrible way, it's quite good for all of us because here we, you know, the whole world thinks everything goes on the same day after day after day, and and it doesn't. Um, you know, I mean, we forget we're animals. Really, life is. It's, it's sort of nasty, brutish, and short. I think that was Hobbes, was it? Anyway, who said that? Anyway, in some ways, we, it gets back to reality a bit, um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you're right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for um, answering all those questions. It's been lovely to catch up with you, and I look forward to seeing you properly and coming up and uh, visiting the studio which is another thing that's been put on hold. That'd be, that'd be very nice, yeah. Yeah, absolutely.